In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to build an awesome 1440p and 4K gaming PC build, all for a budget of somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000, based around AMD's latest and greatest RX 9070 XT. I'll be walking through my favourite parts for a build like this, the kind of performance that they offer up with detailed gaming benchmarks a little bit later, and things to be aware of if you're going to build a system like this for yourself. Let's do this. The Corsair Frame 4000D is here and better than ever. With a spacious and fully modular design, you can configure this case to meet your build's exact needs. Improved airflow at the front and on the side helps to keep temperatures down, while Corsair's new InfiniRail mounting system allows you to adjust fan rails for added versatility and a cleaner aesthetic. What's more, it's compatible with reverse connector motherboards, 360mm all-in-one radiators, and comes with an integrated GPU anti-sag arm. Learn more and check it out at the first links in the description below. Let's begin by looking at the CPU and GPU combo, as these are the two parts that make by far and away the biggest impact to gaming performance. Now when AMD launched their new 9000 GPUs, it would be safe to say they took their time a bit. This is the higher end 9070 XT. Now it's designed to rival the RTX 5070 Ti at a lower price point. That's obviously great for you guys who are looking for potentially a better value GPU, and you get things things like 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and great rasterization performance. In most titles, the 9070 XT gives the 5070 Ti a run for its money and represents a better cost per frame. That basically means you pay less pounds or dollars for the frame rate the card outputs. When paired up with a CPU like the Ryzen 7 9700X, you not only get really strong gaming performance, but good multi-core performance too. Whether you're looking to do like video editing, game streaming, or just gaming itself, this is a combo that sets you up really nicely. Now, the advantage of our AM5 CPU is that we can go for a really great AM5 motherboard. And in this build, I've gone for none other than the Gigabyte X870 Eagle Wi-Fi 7. Whenever a new CPU comes out, there's always various motherboard chipsets available. X870 is higher end, but this is one of the cheapest X870 options. Despite the price, you still get Wi-Fi 7 connectivity, which is useful more for the future than it probably is right now, and a board design that is, well, overall pretty fantastic. This board is very similar in look and feel to the B650 Eagle board and you can see here we've got our four RAM DIMM slots, the AM5 socket for anything from a Ryzen 5 to a 9950X 3D CPU, of course Gen 5 for your PCI slot and the top M.2 slot which is also totally toolless, nice to see, and X870 gives you a couple of advantages on the rear I.O. We've got more high speed USB ports, that Wi-Fi 7, no optical audio but you do get two and a half gigabit Ethernet which is great to see. I'm going to keep the motherboard out because that will be one of the first parts I use later, but now also seems like a good time to talk about the RAM and SSD in today's build. I've gone for the Crucial P3 Plus for our storage. This particular drive is a two terabyte model. Alongside Corsair's Vengeance for AMD, this is a 32 gigabyte, 6,000 megahertz kit. If you want to do more productivity applications, you can up the RAM to 64 gigs. And equally, if you want to save a bit of money or spend a bit more, you could knock the storage down to a terabyte or up to four. Now, in terms of other components to talk about, the CPU cooler is an area where you might think I've gone a little bit overkill, but I want to talk to you about this. It's the Montec Hyperflow ARGB360. Now, Montec are one of my favorite brands at the moment. It's not sponsored. They just make amazing products. This is one of the best value 360mm all-in-ones you can buy. You can get it in black or white. It's got RGB fans that are not only going to look great, but give us better airflow too, and this nice RGB pump block. In fact, when we benchmark this across a range of different tests on a high-end CPU compared to lots of cool as it came out really well. In terms of power, I've gone for Corsair's RM850E. This is the newest ATX 3.1 and PCIe 5.1 version. That basically means it's on the new power supply standard and gives you the high power GPU connector, which some of the 9070 XD cards are using. I'm not actually sure what this uses, so we'll find that out, but the power supply has the old and the new style, so either way, we're gonna be fine. One more component to talk about, and that is the case, which is easily the largest and most cumbersome part of today's build, and it is this, sticking with the Montec theme. 
This is the King 65 Pro in black. Montec have got two case models I really like, the 95 and the 65. They're both based around pretty much the same tooling. The 95 has a few more curved panels and RGB bits and pieces. The 65 is cheaper, but you still get three included fans and a fan hub as standard on the Pro version, which is amazing to see. There's nothing better than a box fresh PC case. I'm just always petrified of the static. Oh, I think we're okay. St oh, <laughs> I was like false sense of security. The only thing that I think Montec could improve if they are for some reason watching is this tempered glass panel. The tint is very dark, which is fine if you've got lots of RGB components, but otherwise it does make the system a little tricky to see inside of. Now I've finished nerding out over the PC case in today's build, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the motherboard assembly. The CPU installation is really easy. I'm just gonna push this arm down and up and then pull the socket cover out of place. Before then dropping the CPU, you into place and you can see here there's a little golden triangle in the top corner which all matches up nicely and the socket cover is going to return down. Next step is the memory and I'm going to open up our 32 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance. The Corsair Vengeance RGB line has to be one of the most like famous designs of memory at this point and this kit is a really cool grey colour which actually matches the motherboard perfectly. In this build I'm going to pull the clips back on the second and fourth dims. There's only clips on this side not on this side which is meant to make your life a bit easier. Then just slide the ram in, bit of pressure, lovely stuff. And you want the Vengeance logo to face outwards. So that's gonna face away from the CPU. The crucial P3 Plus is the next stage. And at this bit of the build, you're just flying through the parts so quickly. Pull back this little retention clip on the M.2 heatsink. Then you're gonna slide the crucial drive in with the gold contact strip facing this way. Pull the tallest clip back. And then remember, peel off the all important thermal pad protector. Don't forget this stage. Before sliding the heatsink back into place. And you can see fully tallest. You don't even need a screwdriver. Nice. I'm going to then move the motherboard into the case. Now you'll find in the case this little accessory box. This contains all the screws and stuff that you actually need to fasten the motherboard down to keep that safe. And I also at this point in the build, I'm going to take off all the panels. Why? Because a case that is panel free, this top one is fully tallest, which is nice, is so much easier to build in. One bonus of this case is that it's an ATX chassis. This is an ATX board. And as such, all the standoffs are already in the right locations. Meaning all I need to do is just slide the motherboard up, get it nicely aligned. And you can see then if you look closely where our standoff holes are, they look a little something like this. And what you're gonna have is three along the top of the motherboard, three along the middle and three in a row down the bottom. Get those nice and tight with a Phillips head screwdriver and the motherboard will then be firmly secured into place. At this stage in the process, you could either carry on with the power supply or you could carry on with the CPU cooler. I think I'm gonna do the PSU first to make a change, then pop the cooler in, which is gonna go on the top of the case. Now, in terms of the cables that you guys are going to need for this build, specifically, you're looking for a few. You want one of these, which is your CPU power cable. You can tell because it splits into two four pins. And on this board, we need a double four, so an eight, as well as a single four. You can see this splits, and that's going to give us all of our CPU power. Then you're going to want a motherboard cable. This is the largest, and it's braided in a slightly different way, making it easy to spot. SATA power, this is what you would use for your old school kind of hard drives or your old SSDs. We're going to use that for our RGB hub. And then, actually, I do need to unbox the GPU because I've got to figure out whether, like some of the Sapphire cards on the 9070 XT SKU, it uses the new high power cable or whether it uses the older 6 plus 2 pins. Here we go, drum roll! Oh, it's a beautiful card as well, by the way. It's a great time to point that out. And this uses, yeah, this uses the older 6 plus 2 pins. Now, ultimately, it is what it is. It's still the right card for the job, but I really would have rather the high power Gen 5 cable. The power supply does have the cables we need, though. So go ahead and grab your PCI. So there's one here, which is a single 6 plus plus two pin and then there should be a double six plus two pin somewhere yes this one is a double so you can see it's actually got one input and two output cables but that is it so you are literally using all the gpu power cables provided next step is to get all of these wired up plug up the motherboard plug up the cpu i've then gone ahead and plugged in all the front panel cables and you can find a full tutorial on all things cables and wiring in the card section now with the cables and wiring done i'm gonna do the cpu cooler next and as i say montex hyperflow i can't get into the box come on yeah yes Thank you very much. And one thing that Montec do, which I really like, is they pre-install all of our fans for us, which makes the next stage of the process really rather easy. Now on AMD configs, what it's gonna do is it's gonna leverage the pre-installed black plastic mounting brackets, and it's gonna clip over those with this AMD specific CPU bracket. So the brackets are gonna go upwards, a little something like so, and they are gonna click on to the CPU water block. Just watch out for your fingers on the pre-applied thermal paste, and they'll clip 
flipped over these little black plastic brackets on the top and bottom of the CPU. The radiator is then my next step. And as you can see, I'm lining this up with the bracket on the top of the case. The bracket is removable, so you could actually take this out to install the rad. But to be honest, in my opinion, it's much easier to take a magnetic screwdriver with the appropriate included radiator screw and just get the thing fastened down. Obviously, you're going to want to install all the screws. But if you just put one in each side of the rad to begin with, that'll hold it into place where you pop the rest in to keep it secure and install the water block too. Then it's time to wrap up with the GPU. And I'm going to hover it into place over the top PCI slot. Yep. So it's the first and second lane covers to be removed. And as you can see, they have thumb screws in them. So take the thumb screws out, but ironically not with your thumbs with a screwdriver, they'll be too tight. And then keep the thumb screws safe as these are what are going to be used to actually fasten the graphics card back down in just a moment's time. I think this has got a little unlock button for the PCI latch. Yep, that's already unlocked. Meaning I can slide this in, press it down, and that's all there is to it. A couple of screws to actually secure it and fasten it into place. One down the bottom and then a further one at the top. Before finally, I'm going to need a trio of six plus two pin GPU power cables to give this card the power it needs. And I should then be able to plug this thing up, turn it on. Oh yes, look at that. Are the CPU cooler fans spinning? Yes, they are. Fans are a little noisy. In fact, very noisy right now. The solution to that is really simple. I need to locate the CPU fan cable coming off of the fan hub at the back. And I need to plug this in to the CPU fan header on the front of the motherboard. And that should calm them down. So it's time to see how this thing performs and it's all powered up in some of your guys' most popular titles. On your screen now is a summary of some of the results that we pulled in. Half of which were tested at 1440p, the other half at 4K. Let's take a closer look at a couple of these numbers, starting with one of the 1440p ones in Call of Duty's Black Ops 6. This was tested in the Zombies mode on the high preset and the build achieved an average of 143 FPS. I also tested out Marvel's Rivals at 1440p, again at 1440p high settings, rasterization, so no FSR, DLSS, ray tracing, any of that kind of technology. The average frame rate was over 130, pretty good. While tuning up to 4K still gives you some very playable results. Take Cyberpunk for example, and here with the 9070 XT at 4K high the build achieved a really impressive 79 FPS on average. You can of course read our full 9070 and 9070 XT reviews for more in-depth gaming benchmarks by any of the parts mentioned today from Amazon at the links down below. Thanks for watching and as always we'll see you in the next one.